Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. For today's video I want to share with you 10 things every international student should know before coming to Scotland. If you're new to my channel then hi my name is Laura. I'm a 22. Wow I'm a 20, I'm 22. I just turned 22 so I'm like really confused but I'm a 22 year old German small town girl abroad in Scotland. I just finished my four year bachelor honors degree in public relations here at the Robert Gordon University in Aberdeen and this channel is all about my life as a German small town girl abroad. So I do a lot of study abroad videos, travel vlogs, day in the life videos, really empowering you to step outside your comfort zone. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, please consider subscribing to this channel. So I've done so many videos about what it's like studying abroad in Scotland, why you should study abroad in Scotland, what I love about studying abroad in Scotland. Just you know adding a few more things that you should know before coming here and to support you even better in your study abroad preparations I created three study abroad checklists which you can get for free if you click the link down below in the description box so I have a study abroad budget calculation a study abroad essentials packing list and a pre-departure checklist of all the things you should do before you leave so make sure you grab your free study abroad checklist down below and let's get started with this video okay so the first thing every international student should know when you go to Scotland is that you don't have to be afraid of the Scottish accent. I can remember like in the first few weeks I was definitely quite exhausted and um, when I came home from university like listening all day to English people around me speaking English like if you're not used to that then yes it's gonna exhaust you but don't worry honestly you're gonna get used to it super quickly and a lot of people in my community actually also reach out to me and they're afraid that they're not gonna do well in university because they're afraid they won't understand the professors the teachers and here I can just tell you that you know the professors and teachers in uni they know that there are tons of international students you know they will put an effort to make sure that you understand and also don't be afraid to ever ask if you don't understand something like even now I sometimes have to ask people to repeat what they're saying just because they might uh, talk a bit too quickly or you know as I said you know the Scottish accent is a, is a thing and it, you know people don't mind repeating themselves and I love the Scottish accent and what was really surprising to me actually is that there's no just one Scottish accent but within Scotland there's so many different accents right so you have I'm currently in Aberdeen so you have like Aberdonian accent you have a Glaswegian accent you have the Edinburgh accent which right now I can't remember how it's called oops so many different accents and it's so cool because when you live here for a while you're gonna start like noticing differences and you know the accent is really cool it's nothing to be afraid of and you might even adapt some of uh, the Scottish ways of saying things which is really really cool if your accent starts getting you know a bit more international I think that's actually really cool the second thing every international student should know before coming to Scotland is that people here love to form lines don't skip the line <laughs> honestly don't skip the line I definitely had to get used to this because when you want to get into a bus there's always a line there is you know lines for everything and in the beginning I just sometimes literally forgot and I wanted to skip the line and I got the weirdest look so <laughs> make sure you don't skip the line make sure you stand in line I know that's not something in a lot of countries I know in Germany like we don't really form any lines and <laughs> um, but yeah don't skip the line number three you cannot leave Scotland without trying Iron Brew, Deep Fried Mars Bar and Fish and Chips. In all honesty, the UK and Scottish food culture is definitely not my favorite. However, there are a few dishes that you just have to try. So if you come to Scotland, I highly recommend you to maybe do a little bit of research or to talk to some locals, ask what are like the Scottish traditional foods and make a little bucket list and make sure you try them all. Um, I've tried all of them. Not the biggest fan of Iron Brew, which by the way, you shouldn't tell Scottish people because they love their Iron Brew and it's like a whole thing. Mm, already like smelling it, it's just horrendous. <laughs> uh, love deep fried Mars bar. We are getting a deep fried Mars bar. That's what it looks like. Ta da! Dreams. <laughs> Love fish and chips. Fish supper. 
from the bay which is very popular fish and chips shop in Stonehaven and before I had this I had it the first time in November and before I had this I thought fish and chips is just horrendous but that actually tastes really yummy at tatty scones or generally scones which by the way English people say scones and Scottish people say scones so it's actually tatty scones which tatty is potato haggis neeps and tatties Tatties, which is haggis, turnips, <laughs> how's it called? Turnips and mashed potato. Also, I highly recommend that. And gravy. Oh my god, you have to try gravy. It's just amazing. So make like a little food bucket list. I highly recommend that. And you have to know that you need to do that before you go to Scotland. Like, you know, preparation is key. Make sure you can tick off all of those things when you come to Scotland. The fourth thing every international student should know before going to Scotland is that how are you is a greeting. It's not like a deep how are you feeling? Tell me your life story. Like literally when you pick up the phone or when you go to a grocery store and they would say, uh, hello, how are you? And you say, oh, I'm good, thank you, how are you? Or not too bad, thank you, how are you? And um, it's not something that, you know, you go into deep conversation. You do that like later in the conversation, but like the first thing, how are you, is just like, what they say or sometimes people don't even give an answer it's like hi how are you oh hi how are you still weird to me to be honest and i still have to get used to that um but i was like kind of surprised when i came here and um, because i also like in germany you don't like in the supermarket you don't ask the person on the tills you don't ask them oh hi how are you like you don't do that so here it's very different and I had to get used to that. By the way, if you are enjoying this video and you're planning to study abroad, then I would highly recommend you guys to check out my ebook, Girls Study Abroad, which is a step-by-step -step guide to study abroad where I put in all the information, all the details you need to know if you want to study abroad from my four years experience of studying abroad in Scotland and Canada. This is really the go-to handbook, everything that you need to know about studying abroad. So I will leave it in the description down below and because you're watching this video, I would love to give you a 10% discount code. If you put in YouTube at checkout, you will get 10% off the ebook. So link is in the description box. Number five of the 10 things every international student should know before going to Scotland. And that's quite a random one. Um, but something that surprised me and it's how cheap or how affordable, affordable, affordable data packages here are. So um, like SIM cards for your phone, basically. Really, really affordable. I'm with GiveGaff, but just generally the um, data packages here are really affordable, which is good because generally the living cost, I would say, is definitely a bit higher. It's a bit higher than Germany for sure. Um, but the data packages are really affordable. So six gigabytes of data, unlimited phone, uh, unlimited calls, unlimited messages for like um, 10 pounds or something, right? Like it's really affordable, which is very great. Um, so when you come here to Scotland, you can just, you know, get a new SIM card. As I said, I'm with GiveGaff and it's not on a contract. It's just, I top it off, uh, I top it up every month. I get a new goodie bag every month. And so I'm really flexible even when I travel, when I move back to Germany, I don't have to worry about any contracts. Number six. The weather is not as bad as you might think. So I know there's this huge stereotype that the weather in Scotland or generally in the UK, it's always rainy, it just sucks, it's cold. And yes, why well, I have to agree that, you know, it is rainy, it is windy, it is sometimes cold. It's not as bad as you think. Um, yes, there is more rain, but there's also more sun. The weather just changes a lot faster, a lot more. It's maybe also because like Aberdeen is on the coast, so the weather is generally changing all the time. And in terms of temperature, yes, it never gets like 30 degrees, but it also does get minus 20 degrees. Like for example, in Aberdeen, it rarely ever gets colder than zero. And it, you know, maybe doesn't get warmer than like 25. That's like the max. I think the most that I've um, experienced here is like 22 or something. Um, but it's definitely not as bad and layering is definitely key. I always make sure that I pack um, more layers when I go somewhere or I dress a bit warmer because you never know, even if it's nice now, it could suddenly change. So preparation is key. And I actually, since I've been living here, I don't really um, check weather reports anymore because to be honest, it changes all the time anyway. Um, but yeah, that's something you should know that it's not as bad and you can make most of it. And to be fair, 
there. I think if any country kind of fits the whole um, foggy and rainy and moody, then it is Scotland, right? Because when it's like rainy and foggy, it feels like you are literally living in Harry Potter, which is, to be honest, big reason why I chose to study abroad in Scotland. Big Harry Potter fan here. Um, it's just cool. Like also if you're like in the highlands, you're hiking and it's like foggy and misty, it's really cool. So don't get too upset about the weather. You can definitely deal with it. Number eight of the 10 things every international student should know before coming to Scotland. And this is that as a student from the EU, you actually don't have to pay for your health insurance and you get free health insurance with the NHS, which is awesome. And I didn't really know that when I, um, first applied to study abroad in Scotland. That is really, really cool actually. And I think if you're from outside the EU, I'm not 100% sure, I'm gonna leave the website to NHS down below, but I think you have to pay around 300 pounds, which even if, per year, which even if you think about that probably isn't as much. And um, so the NHS is really great. And I know that, you know, insurances and all that paperwork can be very scary when you go to study abroad. And um, which by the way, I also cover all of that in my ebook, Girls Study Abroad just you know giving you some tips and kind of taking the anxiety away from you the overwhelm because I know how overwhelming can be so again the link to the ebook is down below in the description box number eight never I repeat never ever mix up England and Scotland never don't do it don't do it <laughs> I sometimes have to laugh when like my uncle or my aunt at home in Germany, they say, oh, how was study abroad in England? And I'm like, if you would say that to a Scot, holy moly, they would not appreciate that. It's really interesting because like when I first came here, I obviously knew from school like how the history of like England and Scotland is, but I did not know that actually um, it kind of still is a thing and people more or less say it in a humorous way, but actually it's not really. And, um, you know, Scots are very proud to be Scottish. They love Scotland and it's a whole thing with England. Um, it's something you kind of have to experience when you come here, but Scotland and England are so different, which I would have never thought honestly before coming here, but it's so different, right? And they do love their differences as well. Um, and you shouldn't change it up. You should never say, and even British, don't say you're British to a Scottish person, because they're Scottish and they're gonna tell you that, trust me. <laughs> Number nine, this is another random one, but I thought it's quite interesting because I also didn't know when I first come, came here. And it's that in your flat, if you rent an apartment, as a student, you don't have to pay for water because you are exempt from council tax. So you don't have to pay for council tax, which to be honest, can be quite a lot. Like council tax can be like up to like a hundred pounds per month. But as a student, you don't have to pay that. Um, so yeah, that's really good. I just thought I would throw that in here. It's a random um, piece of information. Um, if you are wondering about like a generally study abroad accommodation, I get so many questions about that. I made a video all about different types of accommodations and helping you find out which one is the best to choose. So make sure you check out that video. And then number 10 of the things that every international student should know before coming to Scotland is that you made the right choice and you found a second home. I can safely say that I love Scotland so much. When my Scottish partner Ross takes me on road trips and we go along the coast, we go through the highlands, we explore new places, we are in the middle of just raw nature. I'm like, I love this country so much and I love the people and it's just such a wonderful country and you've made the right decision. If you are coming here to study abroad or to live here or to do an internship or whatever it is, you made the right choice and studying abroad or living abroad definitely has its challenges and it's not always gonna be easy, it's not always gonna be perfect, it's not always gonna be Instagram worthy, 
but you know in the end you are living in a different culture and a different country in a different language and that helps you grow so much it has totally changed who I am as a person it still is every single day that I'm abroad and which is also why I'm so passionate you know about helping you to go abroad because it's just personal development on a whole nother level and I just really want to be here to support you in this and if you want to connect with like-minded girls from all around the world who are also studying abroad who can maybe help you answer your questions I would love to invite you to join my free Facebook group a girls study abroad in there there are over 1,500 girls now from all around the world studying abroad in all kinds of different countries so if you want to connect with girls who are in the same situation as you because I know that Sometimes when you come from a small town like me, no one really around you gets why you want to go abroad, right? So it's important we connect with like-minded girls. So feel free to join. I'm really interested to know where you are from and where you want to study abroad. So I guess if you're watching this video, you probably want to study abroad in Scotland. Let me know what city you want to study abroad in, what um, university you want to study abroad at, course, tell me everything and also tell me where you're from. As I said in my intro, I'm from Germany and I'm studying, or I studied, uh, I'm just graduating now, I'm a COVID graduation. <laughs> um, and I studied at RGU here in Aberdeen, studying public relations. So I'm very curious to know your answer. Anyway, thank you so, so much for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up if you found it valuable. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in my next video. Bye.